I'm particularly pleased to be here today because I, I see improving the quality and the impact of CLD really as a key strategy for tackling the ambitious agenda that we have for Scottish education nationally uh, and as an organisation. And I see the role of the Standards Council in particular as quite a key one, exciting new role developing uh, very much as Rory was indicating, I think, a new, a stronger profession uh, and ensuring that CLD practice happens more consistently and with even greater quality across the country as a result. And the notion of building a learning society is very much at the heart of uh, Education Scotland's remit and purpose. As Duncan said, we're a very new organisation, just created back on 1st of July last year. Uh, and as you see, I think, on, on the slide, the strapline transforming lives through learning is how we, how we see ourselves, and that covers all forms of learning in all settings. And if we just flip the next slide up, I mean, we have our new draft vision, as all good organisations uh, working on vision, mission, and all of the rest. And you'll see the vision uh, covers a, a very broad view of education and has a very particular focus, I think, on tackling uh, inequity in society and the role of education in, in countering that. So it's about learning for all uh, and ensuring that uh, better outcomes are achieved for all, even in particularly those with uh, tackling more disadvantage in their, on the way to their educational successes and learning achievements. This slide really illustrates the broad remit which Education Scotland was given by the Cabinet Secretary when we were set up in the middle of last year. And you'll see it covers now, we are now an integrated national improvement agency which covers everything through from uh, setting broad guidelines for practice through helping stimulate innovation and development in the system through supporting evaluation, uh, through inspection and research and other forms and feeding back intelligence that comes from the outside world from research beyond Scotland as well as within Scotland, all back to feed to frontline practitioners because ultimately what all this needs to be about is acting as a national infrastructure which helps drive creativity, innovation and good practice in the system, stimulating, identifying and then spreading the best practice that emerges. But fundamentally, it's a bottom-up model, absolutely. And all of the functions that are there apply to our work in relation to community learning and development, just as they do to other educational services and providers across the piece. But I am particularly convinced that CLD should be a key player in turning our broad vision into reality. And I suspect that vision, which we put up earlier, uh, is a vision that we all share in some form or another. Uh, a vision on raising achievement, but also tackling inequity. And in particular, the vision reflects the fact that we, widely accepted fact, I think, that we now need to see the Scottish education system, the Scottish learning system, if you like, getting much better at reaching people who aren't currently well served by formal education system. And clearly CLD should be a key force here in helping create a fairer, more equitable society in which learn learning does play a key role in reducing social inequality. And that's true of all of the three main strands of CLD work, I think. I mean, it's true of adult work, clearly, where promoting lifelong learning for all and encouraging people who had un unproductive experiences in their childhood back into uh, learning to get the benefits of learning through adulthood uh, is clearly a core role. It's true of youth work, certainly, where CLD plays a vital role in promoting broader achievements for all and particularly providing creative contexts for learning which can re-engage learners who have been turned off by more conventional educational experiences. And it's true equally of community capacity building work, where there's a very clear and widely accepted understanding now, uh, very clear in, in national policy, that one of the most effective ways of tackling the cycle of social disadvantage and educational underachievement is to build on the assets, and that's very much the word of the moment, the assets present among parents and communities in ways which lead, lead them to positively value learning for themselves and of course therefore also for their children. Uh, and whilst, as I say, that's very much policy flavour of the month at the moment nationally, I'm also aware that many CLD practitioners who've been around for a while will be saying, yeah, we've been telling you that for a couple of decades or so, and it's nice that somebody's finally recognising it. So in addition to all of that, I mean, supporting the development of the Standards Council, we're placing emphasis particularly on promoting high-quality CLD across all of our core activities. 
as I say, that we, we're carrying out across the agency. We will be locating CLD in a strong position within our new emerging organisational structure, and we're currently just beginning to uh, map out and roll out a new organisational structure, which we'll uh, be fully announcing and moving into in the summer. We're ensuring we have a clear and explicit focus on lifelong learning, and CLD staff will also have a key role in our work with community planning partnerships, which is a growing role, with schools and with early practitioners, for example. And as I said before, I'm very pleased to be able to actively support the development of the Standards Council for CLD, with its focus, very clear focus on raising standards of practice through providing a home and, and business support to help the Council grow and develop over the years ahead, and particularly the three-year focus that's already been mentioned. I know the Standards Council will continue to develop its own goals on behalf of the workforce and profession in CLD across Scotland. And I think it's true in all fields of education, and perhaps public service more generally actually, that the most effective way of raising the quality of a professional service is to raise the quality and consistency of those who come into the profession in the first place and their skills, and to ensure that they continue to develop strongly as practitioners throughout their careers. And that's why, again, I would echo absolutely Rory's emphasis on CPD and continuing development as vital. And that's clearly, in essence, what the Standards Council has been set up to do. And the remit of the Council has already been uh, well advertised, so I won't repeat it here. But I would say that all strands of that remit are important functions. And I'm very keen that the Council uh, achieves growing success in pursuing its mission. And I also recognise that to do that, it needs to have its own distinctive identity, as, as I think it clearly does. And to support that principle, we are in the advanced stages of, of signing off a framework, a framework agreement really between Education Scotland and the Standards Council. Duncan mentioned to that, uh, that that was well developed and that will affirm the links between the two, how Education Scotland as the host agency, if you like, uh, works clearly with a, an independent voice as the Standards Council, recognising the distinct governance responsibilities of the Standards Council infrastructure and the role of its committees. But of course, that doesn't mean we won't work in close alignment. We've already seen benefits from partnership working between Education Scotland and the Standards Council, and we'll certainly be continuing to explore where further partnership opportunities lie, including the national networks of partners active in delivering CLD on behalf of learners and communities, and many of those were on a previous slide. And we have a wide range of activities going on in support of improving quality in CLD within Education Scotland. We have our inspection programme of learning communities, for example, and support we produce for self-evaluation by CLD practitioners and providers. That's core element of our remit, as is the role of the communities team in policy implementation, building the capacity of providers and practice development. We're developing and delivering continuing professional development. That's a core part of our work in CLD as well. Our communities team are doing this in a variety of ways. They're supporting local partnerships to build their CPD infrastructure, develop their use of CPD methods such as action learning sets and to deliver training opportunities across the country. We're developing national support for CPD, sharing of experience across local developments and better links between what happens locally and national support. And we're supporting practitioner networks in particular aspects of work uh, in priority areas like family learning. So working in partnership with the Standards Council and with other national agencies with remits for areas of CLD like YouthLink will be central to all of this. Our community's team is carrying out the lead strategic role in the implementation of ALICE 2020, the Scottish Government strategy for adult literacies, and we're also playing a major part in the implementation of the national ESOL strategy. And an Another important theme, which we sh certainly should not underestimate, I believe that ensuring CLD has a strong role in working in collaboration with other more mainstream education providers is a key to our ambitions for Curriculum for Excellence, one of the big learning policy areas in, in Scottish policy. Our CL CLD activities from both HMI and from the communities team are leading developments in strengthening those links and those contributions. The Scottish Government are planning legislation on community empowerment and our communities team is working with the CLD field to develop practice in support of that policy. 
And in relation to the overarching policy for the sector as a whole, we are working with Scottish Government to develop the strategic guidance for CLD and are currently organising the national discussion, the consultation exercise that you'll all be aware of that will inform that guidance. We'll use that to draw together and drive forward all the strands of our work in CLD to give it strategic direction and ensure it makes a difference for communities across Scotland. So we do have strong ambitions for CLD and Education Scotland, working with the Standards Council, and I see supporting and collaborating with Rory and his colleagues as a key means of making the progress we all need to make. And if I can just sign off really by throwing out one more general challenge to you as a profession, as a profession in development in the learning field, it's to demonstrate even more clearly how you contribute, how you do contribute to the government's key national agendas and more than just contribute, actually, how you can demonstrate impact. This slide uh, shows John Swinney's, if you like, the cabinet, Scottish Government Cabinet, four pillars of public service reform. It's really their response to the Christie Review of Public Services in Scotland. Uh, some of us in the room, I think, are going to an event uh, tonight and tomorrow at which John Swinney will be talking to all the leaders of local authorities and health boards and all the rest of us. Uh, about his vision for public service reform in Scotland, and I can guarantee I'd be prepared to put money on the fact that he will refer directly to these four pillars of public reform as the key overarching principles. Now, I think from CLD point of view, you're in a, a strong place in relation to these four pillars. Uh, they play very much to the kind of contributions you can and do make. In this tight financial context, the important thing is to make that clear, make that very explicit, and also to increasingly to be able to generate real hard evidence of outcomes and impact from CLD work so that people realise in prioritising these areas that, that CLD is a very strong and important part of the answer. So thanks again for opportunities to speak this morning, and I hope you have a really productive day.